BBC Sounds, music, radio, podcasts. Hello, welcome to this Moneybox podcast. Gas and electricity prices will rise by more than 9% from April the 1st, even though inflation is less than 1%. Barclays Bank told a customer she hadn't been sold payment protection insurance, so she couldn't claim compensation. She had, in fact, been missold it. And the broken market in selling solutions to people who were deeply in debt. But first, people with holiday homes on caravan sites across the UK have told Moneybox they've been denied refunds on their annual fees of thousands of pounds a year, even though they haven't been able to visit their caravans for most of the pandemic. There are hundreds of thousands of static caravans on holiday sites around Britain. Owners buy a caravan from a site owner, and then they're charged 5,000, even 10,000 pounds a year for facilities such as gyms and so on, and also, of course, for maintenance and security. The fixed costs are still met by the site owners during lockdown, but many caravan owners say because the park has been closed during the first, second and now the third lockdown, they should be refunded, at least some of their fees. Glynis owns a caravan at a park run by Shawfield Holidays in Dorset. So I've had it there for about seven or eight years. We pay our normal site fees in two separate halves. We're allowed to use the site for 11 months of the year. They, they always close for January. Obviously, through no fault of their own, we cannot access the site currently. And how many times have you not been able to access it during the coronavirus pandemic? Obviously, I, I don't think I've been at all since last March. They were open a little bit, I think, during the summer, but then obviously they've had to close again. How much do you pay for it? So it's just over £5,000 a year just for the site fees, and then obviously you've got your um, utilities on top, such as your you know, electricity and heating and so forth. Well, after the first lockdown in March, caravan owners at Shawfield were given a 50% credit on fees for the 14 weeks the park was forced to shut. But that hasn't happened in more recent lockdowns. I think, you know, it wouldn't be unreasonable for us to say, you know, 50%. We've all still got, our, obviously, our caravans on the site. But a lot of the things are funded, like the leisure centre is funded by the site fees. And what have the company said to you about this request for more money? Basically, if we don't pay, we're, we're, we're in breach of our contracts. The park has expenses, it has security, it has to pay utility bills for itself and so on. So it does have some expenses, doesn't it? Of course, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying I don't think it's unreasonable. We are still obviously keeping our caravans on site. They probably are still having to pay some of the groundsmen to cut the grass or whatever. But, um, but they've been very lucky. They've been able to furlough their staff, you know, saving 80% of their wages. But yet the site owners are still paying 100% of their site fees. But I think that, you know, it wouldn't be unreasonable for us to be asking for something back. Well, that's Glynis, and listening to that is Gary Rycroft, a partner with solicitors Joseph A. Jones. Gary Rycroft, is Glynis entitled to something back on her fees for the latest lockdowns? Well, you know, Paul, it's your lucky day because I'm going to give you two answers for the price of one here. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the first answer is, yes, of course, there should be and is a legal right for a, for, for a refund where there is a consumer here, Glynis, who has paid for services which a business has not fully provided or performed. There are also shades of the doctrine of frustration of contract, which we've talked about many times on Moneybox since the pandemic occurred last year. And that doctrine says that where there's an intervening event, here COVID-19, which renders it either physically or commercially impossible for a contract to be performed, then the contract should be voided and there should be a refund. As, as you said, there is also sympathy for the business who have had on ongoing expenses and legally they do have a duty to mitigate their losses so using the furlough scheme, uh, taking government grants, claiming on insurance are all things that should limit the losses that the business have had. So that all leads to Glynis, in my view, taking the correct and reasonable approach of saying let's do a deal here guys, you've had some expenses, I've had to pay for things that I've not received, there must be a meeting in the middle. So that's my first answer, which is based on, on this situation kind of in isolation, as it were, Paul. But actually, if you, if you delve into it, it is a more complicated situation than that. You're going to tell me why, I'm sure, but before you do, a fair reduction, do you think 50%, as Glynis suggested, is possibly about right? Well, I think that does seem reasonable. It would be really good if Shawfield could actually provide a breakdown of expenses that they've incurred that they are seeking to claim from her, wouldn't it? Yes. So what's the complexity that you've identified here, briefly? Well, 
this is not a one-dimensional relationship. It's a multi-layered and complicated relationship. Um, when the pandemic struck, we had situations with things like holiday cottages and gyms where they were very reluctant at the beginning to refund people, but they eventually saw the light and decided to do that. And that was really because people had the choice as to whether they go back to those holiday cottages or gyms or not. Here, Glynis doesn't really have that same choice because her van is on the site. And so that means if she didn't want to be at Shawfield anymore, she'd have a heck of a job to shift her big beast of a trailer off the site. It would be expensive. She might be tied into a long-term license agreement that means she can't leave anyway. She might be t tied into a short-term one and might be worried that they're going to throw her off. So actually, this is a complicated relationship. And I think it means there's an imbalance of power, which means it's not quite as simple for Glynis to ask for that refund. Well, listening to that is Ros Pritchard. She's Director General of the British Holiday and Home Parks Association. Um, Ros Pritchard, are your members generally giving at least some refunds to holiday homeowners? Yes. Um, at the beginning last March, when we the industry was closing down, we advised members to engage with their customers, but to not do anything too quickly because of the uncertainty of the situation. Um, this year, we are once again in a very, very uncertain situation. So we're asking our members to engage. Um, you talked about this is a relationship. It's in the interest of both the caravan owner and, and the park owner, the business survives. And at the moment, we don't know what 2021 will hold. No, we don't indeed. But we know exactly what happened in 2020, don't we? Site owners know how many weeks their sites were closed and they know how many weeks people weren't allowed to travel to them and some people couldn't travel at all because of their personal circumstances. So they could go back to 2020 and say so many weeks and then offer, as Shawfield did for the first lockdown, 50% or a percentage of fees for those weeks they were shut. They could easily do that. Which is what many of them did and are still doing but yes. at the moment we're looking at all business support falling off a cliff edge at the end of next month yes i know that um, but and that's we don't not, know where we are this year that's not the problem of, of the people who are renting these caravans is it i have to say we've had a hundred emails literally in the last couple of days 19 out of 20 complaining they talk about a predicament many requests to remain anonymous to due to any consequences that could be taken by park owners um, several people said that and another one says they're ripping off owners and holiday makers there's no refuse collection no maintenance all but one staff are furloughed why should we pay in full while they fill their pockets that's the sort of thing the customers of your members are telling us well, no business wants those sort of attitudes from their customers. But well, I, they're not attitudes. They're how they feel and how they've been treated. Well, that's not. We want our customers to be happy and we want our businesses to survive. So we have been engaging. There have, I have seen no, a whole range of different measures in the interest of goodwill that park businesses have offered to their customers and continue to. But just at the moment, they are not in a position to look forwards to know that how the business so, is going to survive so this is, is too early mm. to be demanding but, refunds from them but no one is saying that they, they they want refunds for 2021 yet they're saying what about 2020 when we couldn't visit our caravans we were paying 5,000 or more a year staff were furloughed costs were being saved yet site owners seem to want income to stay the same I don't think that is the case because across the industry I have seen, as I say, a range of different measures in the interest of goodwill. Um, there's also a little bit naivety that because you can furlough some staff, your business is therefore on an even keel, which isn't the case. The costs of going on all the time. A lot of people think that the park is sitting there and the maintenance is cheap because people aren't there. They're overlooking the infrastructure that is being maintained. Mm and the finance costs on that business and of course all the finance they've all taken on extra finance in order to try to survive Ros Pritchard thanks very much and thanks to Gary Rycroft earlier electricity and gas bills will rise in April by an average of 96 pounds a year 